on this computer. Yeah, there we go. I think we're recording. Okay, let's get started. All right. Hey everyone, and welcome to Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. And for the first time, both myself and Papa Smokes on the screen in a long time. We figured out technology finally, Papa Smokes. Here we are. So anyway, we're going to yeah, get we right down it into it. Uh, enjoy this. I mean, now we get to put a face behind the voice there for Papa Smokes. It's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if it's so wonderful, but you can see it anyway. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, let's get started. Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. Uh, first time we're doing the Zoom thing. It's great. Uh, but before we get started here, we're going to ask you to go ahead, click the subscribe button down below, turn on notifications so you know anytime we have new content right here on the Video Bros Network. So getting right into things with Ring Respect Radio here today. First, a quick shout out to our brothers over in Alberta, our backbreaker media brothers out there. They've been doing wonderful things. And Mike's put together this nice little video package here promoting not only us, but also all the other podcasts that are under the backbreaker media uh, label. So here we go. We're going to play that for you guys right now. And there it is, well put together by our good buddy Mike, and awesome, I hate me, ring respect coming up first on the video, we got a little respect there, Pop Smokes, wonderful. All right, what a plug. So anyway, we're going to get down to it, we're going to talk about MLW Fusion again here today, we're doing our recap review, it's MLW Fusion 125, going to the build-up of Never Say Never, at the time of recording, of course, we are a little bit behind, Never Say Never did take place, and you and I have both caught up and seen, we're going to get to all of that. Uh, through the next few episodes here of Ring Respect Radio, probably drop another triple threat on people one of these weekends like we did just recently. That was a lot of fun as it was. So MLW Fusion, episode 125, Pop Smokes. This one got started off hot and heavy. We had a main event tag match scheduled for the main event in the evening. And before anything can even get started, the night starts off with a brawl in the parking lot. We got Injustice, we got Contra, and we've also got the boys in Los Parks out there just brawling it out. Definitely sounds like an MLW Fusion episode with everybody brawling in the parking lot beforehand. Yeah, sure is. And I like uh, I thought the comment was made the halfway through that the cops are on the way. <laughs> it's good good yeah. uh, little little bit of fun that they had to kick that off. And hey, it wasn't a too long a segment, didn't bog things down or anything. Uh, just really kickstarted the night and puts our main event of the evening in question now at this point. What's going to end up happening? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So here we go uh, from there, starting off the night with the MLW uh, middleweight championship match. We know the open contract was going to be taken by somebody who said somebody was taking this opportunity to face Leo Rush. Who was it going to be? And it's Brian Pillman Jr., Papa Smokes. I was kind of surprised, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. It looks like he's still doing shots, finishing stuff up in MLW before uh, he goes to AEW permanently, I suppose. And uh well, this is a nice match for him, a middleweight championship match against Leo Rush. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched this thing. I wasn't sure what I was going to think. I mean, we said it a few times before when it comes to Brian Pillman Jr. that it's like there's, there's a lot to be said. It's still a lot of work to go for the young man and everything. And watching this one, I kind of am a, in a weird place. I think this is the best Brian Pillman Jr. match we've seen in a while. And yet my least favorite, Leo Rush, and neither of those being a negative towards either guy. The match actually wasn't a bad match in the end. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, too. Uh, we've watched Brian Pillman Jr. over the past two years or so in MLW, and uh, it seemed like he needed a lot of work before uh, the whole COVID shutdown thing. But since then, I think we both agreed that it looks like he's coming along nicely. He's obviously putting some reps in, putting some work and matches in with a uh, trainer and and that kind of thing. And yeah, I think he's looking a lot more comfortable in the ring. And this was this match was a good example of that. Yeah, he really played it up. A lot of great uh, ground rep grappling and stuff like that that went on here, especially from Brian Pillman Jr. And then again, a lot of the spots that Leo does, uh, some of the things I like, some of these like low end spin kicks that he ends up doing and stuff like that when his opponent's low to the ground or when uh, Brian Pillman was actually challenging him to come in with the shoulder tackle and be Leo being as small as he is, he starts bouncing off the ropes and he does that where he runs in and then he jumps to the other rope real quick to kind of psych his opponent out a little bit, maybe build a little extra momentum. Thought that was a fun spot. I really like seeing that too. Yeah, one of the things that struck me about this match too is Leo Rush and that motor mouth of his. Boy, he was talking some trash 
at the beginning of this match and all the way through, you could see that it uh, it sowed some uh, bad seeds too. You you could see the match started to break down a little bit with some strikes and some slaps and some uh, malice to all those uh, moves that they were doing. So uh, Leo Rush continuing with his uh, bread and butter being his 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 mouth that he can run all the time. It works. It it, it ups the ante in a match and makes it more uh, personal between the two. Yeah, it's starting to become a very effective uh, run for him with the championship as well as that uh, AAA uh, Cruiserweight Championship as well, too. I mean, he's running around with all the gold, undefeated streak so far in MLW since making that debut. Things are looking good for Leo Rush and for the entire middleweight division at this point. Yeah, they're looking good. And uh, Pillman put in a nice match here, but uh, he was in tough against the champ, Rush, and... uh, Despite uh, Pillman giving a nice top rope superplex and all that uh, rush with that nice bottom rope cutter that he uses, then the frog splash after that, looking good. Uh, had a had a decent challenger here and uh, put him away in uh, less than ten minutes. It's it's a good showing for Leo Rush and their champ continues to look strong. Yeah, higher energy on the show. We had that great uh, high energy opening right into a higher energy match. I mean, we're really kicking ass on this episode of Fusion already. And from there, uh, after that big win, we go straight to some breaking news about that main event. Now been changed to a no disqualification triple threat match between Los Parks, Injustice, and Contra. Uh, Thoughts on the decision to go this direction? I'm not really sure. I wonder what happened uh, if something actually happened to change the booking of this match uh, aside from the parking lot brawl, but um, it's going to be a schmozzle and a big mess for a main event and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be interesting. We'll see how that one pans out as we go along here. Uh, from there, we had a uh, Hammerstone promo. Uh, it was talking about uh, Selena De La Renta, Mil Mortez making the attack on him, taking his never open weight cha- or sorry, his open weight championship, national open weight championship to be correct. And uh, basically laying it down that Azteca Underground do not own the championship just because they've stolen it from him. That if Mil Mortez actually wants that championship, that he needs to basically, I think the term was, leave his woman behind, dig deep in his pants and find a set of balls and come in and challenge Hammerstone to a match. What a great promo. I was loving it. I mean, the intensity from Hammerstone and the delivery from him on top of that little touch of comedy that's, it's good comedy. It's the comedy that fits this type of promo. He's pretty good on the mic, I think. And, and Hammerstone is one of those guys, despite his intensely great uh, uh, musculature and his great look and everything, he still strikes me as kind of an everyman. I, I think that uh, fans can connect with him because he's funny and he's cool and he talks good. And a lot of fans look up to this guy. So what a great uh, baby face uh, uh, champion we have in Alexander Hammerstone and he's going to want that belt back in a bad way and uh, all the talk that uh, ownership is nine tenths of the law is, is not going to help Mil Muertes when uh, Hammerstone gets his hands on him. Yeah it's going to be one hell of a fight definitely looking forward to Hammerstone and Mil Muertes when it actually happens I think we're going to be in for you know a classic match for, for MLW in that one. So from there, uh, after that one, we went to another promo. Uh, first, I should say that right before this next promo, they did play the advertisement for the Dark Side of the Ring episode that's going to feature the Von Eric family, or did feature the Von Eric family. I haven't had a chance to check that out just yet. Not sure if you have yet, folks, but definitely looks like a very interesting episode that we should take in. And then from there, the Von Eric's promo that followed that up, I got to say, man, I said it online, and I'll say it again. Best Von Erichs promo I've seen. That had the most heart, the most determination. It made sense. It was just passionate and awesome. I love this promo. Yeah, they've had a few good ones lately, haven't they? I was going to ask you, Munson, Munson, which is your favorite Von Erich? Do you like Ross better? Do you like Marshall? Because I like Marshall. He's the one that's a little bit on the edge. He's got the temper. He sounds like he's out of control. It sounds like he's ready to attack someone every promo. Which do you like better? I mean, I, I do, but he, they, they balance each other out very nicely, i got to say. But I'm with you on Marshall. I mean, he can't yeah. also like Marshall. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's great. And that's no slight against Ross. Ross is great in his own way, too. And I think as a tag team, they balance each other out perfectly. I like them as a group. I think they need to stick to it. This is not one of those situations where let's look forward to when we split these guys apart. I mean, if you want them to do singles runs, 
great. Do it. Don't do a split apart. The Von Erics need to stick together. They're brothers. Keep it that way. There's no, there's no need for it anytime soon. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see that happening in the near future, but it would make a hell of an angle at some point. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, you got to do it at a time when nobody expects it and total shock, like, you know, the day after they win the tag titles or something, but we're yeah. talking down the road. Hopefully no one listens to that and takes that uh, seriously anytime soon. That's for damn sure. But from there, we got uh, another a uh, little bit uh, from the Azteca Underground. They started talking about Azteca Underground online, some of the uh, things about the artifacts and the opportunities. You know what, Papa Smokes, I've said it before about Dario Cueto from uh, Lucha Underground, and there is even a spot where one of the commentators makes mention later with Mil Mortez on commentary saying that he was a former Lucha Underground champion. They're starting to make those references. And if you go and look at the Azteca Underground site, the artifacts and everything there just look like the kind of things that Dario Cueto used to bring out on Lucha Underground and say this particular artifact from the past is what the guys are going to be fighting for. And it brings opportunity. And, you know, winning this medallion would mean you would get to, you know, have a chance at the world championship when you want to kind of thing. Not like a money in the bank situation where you'd actually promote the hell out of the match and stuff, but somebody would actually earn it through winning one of these artifacts. That would be their opportunity that they received from Dario Cueto. I really feel El Jefe is Dario Cueto and that reveal is coming. Well, okay. The, your guess is sounding better and better than, than uh, mine sounding worse, but uh, we're going to see who this mysterious El Jefe is at some point. Uh, the man with the deep pockets that's uh Got Selena De La Renta basically wrapped around his finger at this point, and we'll also see what happens with that situation, I suppose, too. Yeah, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. They played it up really, really nice. And right after they start going into this, we got a promo from Selena De La Renta, uh, basically talking about the main event, also mentioning about Hammerstone's comments. I mean, she's got her damn hands full right now with everything going on at the moment. Yeah, and it's good that they're giving her lots to do because she's so good with it. He's the her young age and the way she can cut a promo and the way she seems to like completely understand the business uh, from the inside out. I think she's really a blue chip stock for MLW. Uh, I hope they can hold on to her for a long time because as you know, she wrestles a little bit too, not in MLW, but she is a trained wrestler too. So I have the feeling uh, at some point uh, she's going to be highly coveted by some bigger companies, but uh, I, I really hope not for now. Yeah, and I've also noticed uh, she's also doing work over with uh, SWE, which I saw a couple of episodes of on YouTube as well, uh, SWE Fury, where she's over there doing managing as well. And I believe Neil Mortez might have made an appearance just recently as well over on their show. So a lot of crossover with some of the MLW talent and SWE. Uh, SWE, I also noticed, has a lot of older talent from uh, WWE past stuff. I saw Teddy Long come out there and give about a 25 minute promo that I fast forwarded. Most of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no disrespect to Teddy Long, but man, if you've seen one Teddy Long promo in the last 20 years, you've seen every Teddy Long promo in the last 20 years. It, uh, yeah, it went through all the tropes. I, I, after about five minutes, I just, I fast forwarded to the matches pretty much. So Maybe he was better as a ref. I liked him as a referee in the old days. Oh, he was fantastic as a referee. The yeah. referees just don't get enough respect, in my opinion, these days. Yeah. You know, shout out to all the referees out there, including our yeah. good friend Ben the Ref, who we missed dearly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from there, we get the uh, the weekly drop, the PWA, PWI, mind you. Sorry, top 10 list. And here we go. We're going to say all 10 and then give a thought. Uh, number 10, Jordan Oliver making the list. Number 9, Gino Medina making the list this week. Uh, number 8 was Myron Reed. 7, Richard Holiday. 6, Mods Kruger. Number 5, Calvin Tankman. 4, is Neil Mortez. 3, Low Key. 2, Tom Lawler. Number 1 is Hammerstone. And the champ, Jacob Fatu. I really don't see any argument with the list with PWI here at all. It's a solid yeah. top 10. Uh, I agree. They usually have it pretty good. The, the only... Spots that usually change are kind of like five or six to ten, and it just depends who's coming in and, and who's getting their push and such like that. I think Gino Medina entering the top ten is interesting too. I, I kind of think this guy's going to make a splash and be good once he gets going. And uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, the belt situation is getting very hot in MLW too. Looking like uh, Fatu's got some tough defenses coming up, as well as Hammerstone's got to get his hands back on his belt. 
I have the feeling the only way he's going to do it is by actually pinning Mil Muertes or, or beating him to the point where he can take his belt back with no problem. So looking good in, in the title situation here too. Yeah, it's fantastic. A lot of great buildup going on. And, you know, all this, we've only really had one match of the evening of this MLW Fusion. So much to talk about already. Uh, but from there, we do finally get that next match. And this is a big boy match if I ever saw one. Pero wow. versus Mil Mortez. Uh, Selena at the side of Mil Mortez. And damn it, man, this is a lot of beef inside that ring. Yeah, I'll say. And, and they had a few tests of power in this match, too. Uh, checking their strength against each other. I, I can hardly even imagine that both these guys have to be uh, 300 pounds just about and uh, massive, massive dudes and really some beef getting slapped around in that ring. And uh, yeah, Peril looking good. He's He's got some skill in there and just that size and that look. And uh, we all, uh, we, you know, we've talked about how much we like Mil Muertes, uh, despite that he's a, evil heel and has kind of a supernatural uh, element to him a little bit but uh nice stuff nice stuff and uh and uh, uh Pero made a, a good effort in this match and uh this one was uh, under five minute or so really like uh just kind of a, a little test for Mil Muertes he dodged the charge to the corner and hit the straight to hell finisher one two three and uh Pero's back to the drawing board but this was a nice match and did what its intention was to put Mil Muertes over as a huge, strong uh, heel in this company. And it, it did just that. Yeah, it was fantastic. And there was the one spot too, when uh, Perro came in and Mil Muertes did that spinning power slam to him or body slam to yeah. him. Man, that's all. Again, Perro is a big man. He's got to be over 300 pounds. And yeah. Mil Muertes swinging him around that quickly and that perfectly. I mean, it just looked absolutely awesome uh both men doing a great job of man mil mortez is just something else i i think this dude is fantastic again i know we're supposed to hate him and you know if we're there live we're going to be booing his ass but in the meantime we're on our show we'll say what we want on here love mil mortez his work is fantastic and the look and everything that they got going on great storyline i am glad they're going down this road with uh, azteca underground selena and the entire group it's all good stuff and it allows us to see some talent from Mexico that we might know the name or have seen the picture, but haven't seen too many matches, such as Emil Muertes. Uh, uh, and that, that's always a good thing when you get to see someone that you've never seen before. It just, uh, it just is great for your wrestling knowledge and for your general sense of entertainment, too. Rolls right into that international flavor we've been speaking so highly about yeah. that MLW has been doing. So yeah. it's it's great stuff to see. So awesome work there. Uh, Mil Mortez picking up that win. And that's, again, where I mentioned about uh, St. Laurent, the one who says about Mil Mortez being a former Lucha Underground champion. So, again, making reference to a now defunct show while bringing in all this stuff that really seems to relate to what Lucha Underground was and that they did at the time. So I res really have a strong feeling we're going to see a lot – of that coming in. And I think uh, there's just a lot going on with MLW. I think we're going to see some interesting things unfold in this whole thing might even lead to another MLW, uh, you know, show uh, maybe not their show exactly, but maybe Azteca underground will have their own events or every once in a while things put together where they will cross talent over from Mexico and from MLW and just get that international flavor going uh, in the underground or sorry, in the uh, Azteca underground again so we yeah. can't wait to and, see honestly yeah absolutely uh from there i believe uh we went to backstage abuku uh, dao been attacked backstage and i want to say uh, yeah that's uh with the que it's in question it was actually during the match if i'm not mistaken that we found out about buku dao being attacked backstage he was laid out uh I think nobody's making any assumptions about it. It's obviously TJP that's taken out Buku Dao backstage, uh, playing the heel, uh, kind of weaseling out of the uh, match that he's got mm -hmm. scheduled against the young guy. But again, his fans, great for us, because now they're prolonging what has been a surprisingly good build between two guys that I wasn't sure I would care about whether we saw a match between them at first, but they've made me care. And that's what I love about this. Yeah, and I think too, introduce Buku Dao they had him and his mentor so to speak TJP 
uh, as a tag team. But I don't think uh, MLW had any real plan to use them as a tag team, or evidently they didn't anyway, because they only had a couple tag matches, and now they're split up with the uh, the the suggestion of bullying being over TJP's head. And of course, this backstage uh, attack won't fix that any. But uh, yeah, like you say, at least we're getting a we're getting a, a build up to their match. And uh, and yeah, if they are student and and master, uh, they will probably be able to put on a pretty darn good match. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be great, and I'm glad they're. Uh... You know, pulling, uh, putting a, a little further ahead kind of thing, not rushing into this thing. Uh, we'll get the build up a little bit longer and interesting things ought to come from it. Looking forward to that one. Uh, from there, we got a Mods Kruger promo. And while I like the design of Mods Kruger's promos and everything like that, uh, what he is saying makes sense. Damn it, if the audio isn't just a little bit so dark that you almost can't hear it and it kind of takes away from it a little bit at this point for me. Yeah, I find that too. And uh, when MLW first did the restart, they were featuring Kruger pretty heavily and we got to see some of his matches, which are the, the best part. Obviously, we want to see this big monster in his matches, but uh, we really have only got uh, those dark, muffled promos, as you were saying. And uh, yeah, we need some more Mads Kruger in action, I think, and uh, we just haven't seen any since those first couple of weeks of the restart. Uh, we haven't seen him since the uh, Backlay brawl, I suppose, uh, when they fought uh, out in that uh, scrapyard or whatever it was uh, in the middle of the night. So, uh, uh, again, I don't know if their talent are doing shots uh, in other companies or something, but we just haven't had... Uh, Mads Kruger in the house uh, in a while now, and I think we need him. Uh, I'd like to see more of him. Yeah, again, more more action out of this guy. Last talk, that's for sure. So, uh, from there, we got another promo, promo heavy tonight. So, Tom Lawler promo, uh, talking about the Von Erics, and he basically getting to pick a matchup between Team Filthy versus, as we've said it, the Von Erics and ACH, and he gets to pick the stipulation, and he picks a chain rope matchup. I'm not sure if I've ever heard of or seen a chain rope match. I mean, I can only assume what a chain rope match is. Um, I don't know, Pop Smokes, do you remember any from the past that you can talk about? No, I do not. This one's a first on me, too. Uh, I realize there have been a lot of uh, wacky stipulation matches in the past, but this one's a first I kind of had to figure out in my mind, and it really wasn't until I watched it later on that I that I realized what they were talking about. But uh Again, it'll be fun for the fans and uh, another feud match. So, uh, yeah, it works for having a stipulation match. Yeah, and when we get to that matchup, we'll talk more about it. A lot of talking in that one, definitely for sure. So we'll get there uh, at a different episode. But then after that one, uh, main event time. So it's this triple threat, no DQ matchup uh, between three teams for the MLW Tag Team Champions. we got Injustice, Myron Reed, and Jordan Oliver. We've got Contra Unit consisting of uh, Davari as well as Simon Gotch. And then we've got Los Parks, that's LA Park, and Elo to LA Park uh, teaming up. And again, this becomes no DQ. So right away, you got to imagine, why would, the, why would the Parks even consider only using two guys in this matchup? you got a no DQ situation. <laughs> Right away, this is this is three dudes in one unit. I mean, you knew this was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. The, the the parks don't care if there is a ref or there isn't a ref or there is rules or aren't rules. They're going to have that third guy anyway. So turning this to a no disqualification even uh, just frees them up to do more. Um, you know my thoughts about triple threat matches. We've talked about them on here before and and, and off the air too. And uh, I use I I don't like them. I think it's one of those uh, kinds of matches where you really you should only use it if you've painted yourself into a corner somehow, but they, they seem to be uh, being more frequently used in all the companies, uh, triple threat matches. And it's just, I suppose it's a way to insert uh, another part of talent in, into that match and get them some exposure. But I really find them as a viewer to be a, a mess usually. And, uh, this one was definitely that. Yeah, I agree, man. It was a mess. I, I, I don't want to rag on MLW. Love MLW. Love the participants. But there was a lot that wasn't good about this matchup. I did not 
enjoy it was very busy first of all so it was hard to keep the control of what was going on what we should focus on then i got a note again you had a match that originally wasn't scheduled for no dq so there was no disqualification match on the entire card when this thing was originally booked so my question is why are there pizza pans under the ring why are there kendo sticks under the ring and all these things that would get brought in a fans bring the weapons match or some sort of gimmicked match like that but this had no intention for a no dq match and yet these things conveniently happen to be under a wrestling ring of all things it's questionable and i think it was a bad decision yeah it's a little breakdown in logic and and i mean for any of these uh, uh, no disqualification matches, I, I, if people are going to look under the ring, I believe the items under there should be items that would be under a wrestling ring. And there are lots of uh, uh, bludgeoning type weapons that you can find under a ring, including two by fours and uh, other uh, prying tools and such like that that can be used as weapons without having to have cooking sheets and, and candle sticks and other things that just wouldn't have or would have no reason to be under a ring. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm splitting hairs here, but I, I do look at the logic of booking all the time. I can't help it. And uh, that one is, seems kind of wacky to me, but uh, Hey, you know, like this is pro wrestling. There's going to be some, some wackiness and some silliness sometimes. And I still enjoyed this match. It was a mess to watch, but like mm. I like the uh, the talent in it, so I, I I got into this. But definitely some uh, silliness in the booking area. Yeah, and then also there's the dive, the cooperative dive over the top ropes that we've been fearing coming to MLW. We've been seeing signs of it coming, and it happened on more than one occasion in this particular matchup. And we're going to see more of it coming up on MLW here soon too. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it just seems to be the way it is nowadays. You try to make the argument yeah. with most people and it's like, well, it's wrestling. It's like, yeah, I get that it's wrestling, but it doesn't have to look like you're waiting for something to happen all the time. I mean, the logic behind it is to make this look like a simulated competition a fight or something like that i mean i'm gonna fight with somebody i hate to say it i'm not waiting around for their ass to dive off something i'm getting the fuck out of the way or something of the sort i'm not yeah. waiting for them to come at me i want them hurt because i want to win this fight yeah yeah and and yeah mlw isn't so bad for it but some companies are pretty bad for doing the same spots in every single match kind of takes away the specialness of them or the power of them and I mean, I always think of it in terms of music. It's like uh, you have a whole album, but every single song you play the same guitar solo. It doesn't make sense, and it's not entertaining, and your fans are going to get tired of that same guitar solo. So you got to switch it up a little bit, like give the fans something new and something fun. And yet you can still use the same batch of moves over and over again, but I think... Uh, um, just if you can not do the same spots every single match, then they mean more when you do use them. Yeah, definitely, man. And like we, like we said, like the talent in this matchup was good. There was some nice spots that you got to see in there because there is talented people involved, but yeah, all in all, just not something I loved, did not enjoy. And as I was watching, I'm thinking, damn it, Pop Smokes and I are going to be on the same page here. I don't think we're going to love yeah. this one and we're going to have to actually, you know, give a bit of a thumbs down to something on an MLW show. I mean, it happens occasionally. Again, it's not enough to ever turn away and say, we're not going to watch it because you know what? They do great 99% of the time. There's that 1% and there it was in this match. Not for us, unfortunately, but hey, otherwise the rest of the show, great. Love the buildup, everything about it. Uh, everything was working well, just didn't do it for me in the main event. Yeah, and I think it's still uh, it's still uh, showed that there was heat between these three teams. Like I think that's that was the whole idea is to say let's show this tag team division, let's show the the top tag teams we have in it, and just let them go at it. And show that there's heat between them, show that they can brawl, show that the belts are important, that the the participants all really want that gold really bad. So I mean. There's that side of it too, just, just as a match. Yeah, they didn't quite do it for me, but that's fine. They they can still uh, they can still have matches like that that uh, that uh, push the narrative uh, of the tag team division along. Yeah, exactly. And it made Los Parks look strong as the tag champs as well too. Another win under their belts. So that's where we go with this episode of MLW Fusion. Anything else to add to this one, Papa Smokes? 
No, not really. But uh, just again, it's it's the slow build towards the uh, pay per view, so to speak. Never say never. And then we got one more show of build before the actual pay per view. So let's get into that. Yeah, we definitely will. But uh, that we'll uh, get right into that one right now here. So MLW Fusion episode 126, just going to readjust myself, been sitting for a while already. Episode 126 kicked off, and as you said, a build-up to never say never on this one. So we started this one off with Yosef Sam I.L. giving another one of his awesome, fantastic promos. Loved every bit of this one. He's talking about injustice, building up for never say never. Man, this guy should always be on a microphone because he is damn good at it. He's so creative and he's so convincing in his uh, delivery. You can see that he's inspired by the old chic Eddie Farhat and his delivery is just fantastic. I like the way he uh, he doesn't just threaten his uh, Contra's opponents in the ring. He, he's, he's telling us straight up Calvin Tankman's execution is imminent. Like... The, the fierceness of those words just is 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 awesome to to bring it like that to wrestling so serious and uh, that's what a lot of promos lack nowadays uh, joseph samuel has it yeah he really does and i don't know if it's this promo i can't quite remember if it's the one he does it never say never where he starts talking about ungrateful americans and they're walking around with their thousand dollar cell phones and all this kind of shit i i just yeah. loved it every bit of it was just fantastic man so a great yeah, way to yeah. kick off MLW 126. Uh, then we go right into the matchups, and we're talking about Gino Medina versus our boy Zenshi. Holy shit, Papa Smoke. Yeah, what a Zenshi. great way to start this night off. All right. So Gino Medina, we've liked what we've seen from him. Uh, he's been getting this uh, push as he's come back into MLW, uh, really kind of leaning towards something with Richard Holiday. But first he's got to go through our boy Zenshi, and once again, Zenshi just looks like a like a million bucks. And I think they said on commentary here about how Zenshi has taken a bit of a blend of Lucha Libre style along with the kind of style that he would have learned uh, back in his home country. I believe he's from Colombia or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. I thought they said Chile. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chile. Okay, yeah, Santiago, Chile. That's correct. Yeah, sorry about yeah. that. But yeah, he took some of what he learned over in Santiago, Chile, blended with this Lucha Libre style. And man, he makes it logical he makes it fun and he looks sharper and sharper every single time we see him i mean we could go on again forever about zenji but i mean obviously this was going to be enjoyable and then there's gino medina this kid looks like a million bucks papa smokes he looks like someone you could push as a star uh he definitely has got you age on his side i mean he's got to be a young kid he looks like a young kid right now but he's just got that that Look, he, he looks good. He looks like he's going to be a tough guy moving forward down the road, but he also looks like he could be a little bit sneaky, a little bit conniving and do the oh, things yeah. that it takes to win a matchup. And, and I like what I see in here so far. Yeah. I, I, I really think uh, Gino Medina is one of the, one of the wrestlers they should really push uh, as, as, as much as they can for his young age at this time. I think he's got, um, the look, I think he's got the skills. I haven't even seen that many of his matches, but I just have a feeling about this guy. Especially, like you said, he's, he looks like a smarmy little prick. He's got the sunglasses and the slick back hair and the little man bun and everything. He makes you want to slap him already. And that's a good thing. He doesn't even have to open his mouth. You just look at this guy and you want to slap his face. So that's a, that's a, a solid gold heel right there. And, uh, I also like that he uh, has it in his uh, delivery that he's all about the uh, maintaining the respect of the past and the luchadors and stuff. We saw the problems he had with Gringo Loco, didn't like his name, didn't like any, uh, him using the uh, uh, Mexican lucha style as, a, as an American. And uh, you can see in this match against Zenshi, Medina just doesn't like it that Zenshi's wearing a mask. You can tell that he doesn't think he deserves it. We'll see it at, at, towards the end of this match. He, he tries to pull the mask off with yeah. uh, with uh, various repercussions after that. But uh, I think Medina's uh, really looking good as a future star in MLW. 
Yeah, and he picks up this win over Zenchi, but you know, Zenchi looked strong a few times that I kind of thought this might have been that yeah. time, but back in my mind, I knew better. I knew that uh, they're pushing <laughs> Gino Medina and Zenchi's a logical person to get in the ring to make him look good while still not ever making himself look bad. Uh, he's fantastic at that. I like the one spot too where Gino Medina was running like he was going to jump to the outside while Zenchi was out there, and Zenchi kind of jumped up. He did that sweep kick uh, to. Gino's legs from the outside yeah. to the inside took him out like that. <laughs> that was just great fun. Love yeah, Zinchi's Zinch, everything he could want in a preliminary talent. He he puts the 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 other his opponents over very very well. Makes himself look good at the same time. Uh, he yeah, he's everything he could want in in a preliminary talent. Yeah, lo- loving it. Gino Medina picks up a big win here, but you know both guys looking strong. Great way to go. Okay, we're going to pause for one sec here, dude. I saw a Roberto message, so I'm just going to tell him to give us okay. a little bit here. Uh, oh, he says he's just eating. No problem. We need 25, 30 minutes anyway. All right. Yeah. So, all right. That's set up. I'll edit this part of the video. Oh, <laughs> well, you got a beer. Oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Fuck. Um, all right. Where we were done, Gino. And I'm just trying to get where we were again. Yeah. Gringo versus Mill. Like, well, Lawler's promo with uh, Alicia or at least Alicia announced that uh, Lawler was injured and not going to be able to fight okay yeah okay yeah so it's gringo versus meal is where we're at first though okay yeah all right yeah so then uh, oh sorry yeah ready to go worries all right yeah all right so from there the second match of the night took place so again kind of back-to-back matches on this this night gringo loco against meal mortez and I kind of felt sorry for Gringo Loco going into this one. You know he's going to get an ass kicking. But, hey, he fared pretty decently in the matchup, held his own. I guess uh, it helps that he's probably comfortable with the Lucha Libre style that Mil Mortez would have been trained in initially and everything like that. Uh, and I think that that it was able to give us a, a reasonably decent matchup. I think maybe this one went on longer than I expected it would for a Mil Mortez versus Gringo Loco match. I think that there would have been a great opportunity to make Neil look even stronger here in absolutely dominating and destroying Gringo Loco, especially, you know, I mean, I loved when he went on the tag, when Gringo was doing his little flippy shit there at the beginning, kind of showing off and everything like that. I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Because I mean, you got a monster like Neil Mortez feeling fine right behind you. Why are you flipping around and dancing for the nobody that's there? And then Neil Mortez went on that attack and beat the piss out of him right there. I loved that. And I love the spot when he put Mil, uh, sorry, Gringo Loco onto the middle rope, walked away to distract the ref, and Selena grabs Gringo Loco around the face and just gives him what for. Those were probably the best spots of the entire match, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny about Mil Muertes, too. You were saying like he was for sure trained as a luchador at some point, but he doesn't really wrestle like one. I mean, no. he's pretty much just brawling. He's such a huge guy that the flip game isn't going to work for him. Maybe he used to. I don't know. But uh, he's so big and so muscular now that, yeah, that's just unnecessary for Mills. So it's just brawling. I like his style. He's a roughhouse wrestler. Hard punches, hard kicks, spears, uh, high-impact moves. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Gringo Loco didn't have a hope in hell in this one, but uh, it still went seven and a half minutes. So, uh, yeah, Loco used to be uh, a talent that they pushed sometimes. Now he seems to be more preliminary talent. Uh, he takes a lot of losses now, but they still it took uh, Muerte seven and a half minutes to get the pinfall. So uh, not too bad. Uh, Loco not looking horrible in this match and Muerte is coming out stronger than ever. Good match. Did what it wanted to do. Yeah, it accomplished a lot. I I I enjoyed it personally. So, just give oh, me yeah. one more second, man. All right. So, 
Okay. Uh, from there, we got some breaking news backstage. Uh, we went to Alicia Toot uh, t- talking about uh, Filthy Tom Lawler, and basically he's not okay to be in the main event matchup here tonight. Uh, so the breaking news, Tom Lawler out, ACH is out, and the main event is now going to be a tag team match, the Vaughn Ericks versus Violence Forever. Um, thoughts on that uh, decision right there? Hardly surprising, really, when you think of Tom <laughs> Lawler. He's going to find a way to cowardly get out of a match sometimes. And uh, I, I don't know if you believe him, Munson, but I don't really believe him. He's going to be running around with a sling on and stuff, too. I think it's all mental games against the Von Ericks. He's frustrating them. He's pissing them off. He's not giving them what they want, is what, which is to get their hands on their enemy Lawler and... Uh, yeah, I, I think he's smart in the way he does this stuff, and he, he's frustrating them and uh, really pissing them off badly. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I know that it's a dirty game that he's playing. And again, I was like, I kept thinking that this uh, three versus three was going to be built up for Never Say Never or a pay-per-view type card, uh, not given away on Fusion. So when I heard this, I was like, something says it's not going to go down this way. It's not going to end up going the three versus three that they're – announcing it for it just seems like there's going to be some shenanigans at play but hey we get violences forever versus the Vaughn Ericks in the main event so I'm not going to complain this is a great matchup by the looks of it yeah yeah I'm going to enjoy this too so from there uh we had Calvin Tankman I believe had a little bit of a promo there uh, and he's building up for his main event matchup and never say never going against Jacob Fatu the champion uh Tankman's very passionate in his promos Again, not too crazy about his choice of promos just because, again, it's the same thing we've heard from so many guys recently. I've got a daughter. I've got a family. I'm fighting for the money. That whole shtick has been done so much in recent memory from professional wrestling that I get it. That's, of course, why you're always in a professional wrestling company. You want to be the champion. Of course you want to be the champion. So I think he could leave it at that. He doesn't need to start dragging the daughter talk into it like so many have done before him. I just go out there and say, I came here for one reason and one reason only. I want to be the champ. And to do that, I got to beat Fatu. Time to go do it. So. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, they're trying to bring the people in with some sympathy too, I think, like to make them like that every man thing we were talking about. He's a dude like any other dude that has a daughter and has kids that he wants to take care of and stuff. But yeah, I can agree with you too that it, it's maybe extraneous. It's maybe unnecessary. Like, look at the guy like he doesn't really need a reason to go after the MLW heavyweight championship. He, he's a huge, intense dude in the ring. Like, I think it could be left at that too, but yeah, we have Tankman. Uh, he's, he's a married man with kids. He's going to support them. So that's his motivation. There we go. Yeah. And we're going to get to see that on the never say never pay-per-view should be a good match. Uh, from there, we had the PWI top five tag teams announced. And again, I start to believe that there just isn't enough tag teams in MLW when you see the list. Number yeah. five, the Dirty Blondes. Again, I, I keep wondering, where the fuck are they? We've seen them twice since this yeah. whole thing started. I mean, it's interesting. They keep making this top five tag list, and yet we have not seen it or even heard about what the progression for the Dirty Blondes will be. Hopefully, there's still something in the works, and they will be returning. Uh, Contra Unit making it number four, great selection. Then Injustice, Violence Forever, the Vaughn Ericks, and then the tag team champs, Lowe's Parks. I mean, I, I guess that with the Dirty Blondes, the only argument is, is there anybody else? Like, maybe that's why that they're making this list. And again, we will maybe see them and there will be a lot from them yet to come. Yeah, they were... When we saw uh, the Dirty Blondes earlier in their two matches, they were also uh, saying that they were part of the stud stable with Robert Fuller. And uh, we never, I was curious about that too, because of course, Robert Fuller has had that stud stable in uh, WCW and various other companies too. And and sometimes he can uh, assemble a pretty good faction of uh, rule breakers uh, or heel wrestlers. So, uh, I was curious to see where this would go and we've never heard a peep from it since. So uh, plans change, especially in the times of COVID and uh, maybe we just don't have the dirty blondes or the stud stable uh, uh, available to MLW at this time. Yeah. And unfortunately, because that again would be something interesting or maybe it's something they're saving 
for what's coming up down the road. A lot of big plans in place for MLW as they're starting to reveal now. So again, there's going to be a lot of need for a lot of talent here coming up soon. I'm sure of it. Uh, from there, we got the announcement TJB, DJP has been fined $2,500 for the attack on Buku Dao. We're going to get a update and hear from Buku Dao on the next episode of MLW Fusion, uh, which I assume is going to be a couple weeks from now or whatever it is, just past the Never Say Never pay-per-view. We're going to get that update on Buku Dao. And then again, maybe look forward to having that matchup coming up with TJP. But in the meantime, TJP, find the money. Be in, uh, get, give him the slap on the wrist here for his attack on his former partner. Yeah, yeah, it's not exactly a big money fine when you think about it, but uh, uh, TJP, yeah, he'll he'll pay it, he'll laugh, but, but he's going to pay uh, Buku Dao something back too. And uh, and uh, yeah, well, I kind of expected this uh, blow-off match to come up on, on Never Say Never, but I don't think it's signed for Never Say Never. So uh, I guess at some point in the future, uh, we don't know the... The uh, situation with Buku Dao, I, I assume he's not actually injured, but possibly is from something else in training or a different match or something. We don't know the uh, the reality behind this. So, uh, yeah, we'll just trust that this uh, feud is going to come to a head at some point in the near future in MLW. Yeah, looking forward to it when it does. Uh, after that, uh, we got right back into in-ring action. Uh, we had the Sentai Death Squash, I mean Death Squad member, against <laughs> Kelvin Tankman. And again, by the name I just gave him, we knew exactly what was going to happen in this matchup. It was always designed for Kelvin Tankman to absolutely destroy this guy. I mean, it was one and done, Papa Smokes. It was there. It was th what it needed to be. Tankman looking strong. And then uh, the story unfolds after that, I think, is where the match really kind of kicks off is that yeah 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 the uh, contra well, members when they decided to show up i think that's when things really picked up yeah yeah sometimes you know when a match is a minute long that the segment is going to be longer than that so there's going to be a dust up after the match or whatever and uh yeah after this quick win against sentai death squad contra attacks uh and then now injustice is out there to fight too uh could backing up their new friend calvin tankman and uh and tankman hit a hell of a driver on uh davari there did you see that one <laughs> months ago wow <laughs> with authority looked, looked on that stiff one. <laughs> looked good i don't think davari was hurt or anything but it looked good yeah oh yeah man it, it was awesome and i mean we keep talking about the dives over the top rope. I mean, at least Calvin Tankman's was a little bit calculated when the Contra members all walked in together at that same time. He saw it, he ran and jumped over and took the three of them out with his 300 and something pound ass. I mean, that, that was a little bit more cool because they weren't waiting on it. They were walking at, at the exact moment. Yeah. Tankman jumped into it. And yeah, it didn't look as cooperative as what some of these dives tend to do. And it was by surprise, too. Rather than the the attackers that are coming from backstage, they're coming, but he, he saw them coming and got them already. There's a believability to that that Tankman had to know having a short match like that. These guys are going to jump me afterwards and try and weaken me before my match against uh, Fatu. And uh, he read it like a book, and they, it, it started off that brawl nicely. Yeah, and again, this was a good way to kind of like have everybody out there that's going to be involved in Never Say Never, the matches that were announced. Again, we're going to see Simon Gotch versus Jordan Oliver, Myron Reed taking on Davari, and then in the main event, Calvin Tankman versus Jacob Fatu. So again, it was a good way to bring all those guys out there at once, do that build. It is kind of the technically the go-home show that everybody talks about when there's a big uh, pay-per-view coming up. This was the go-home for Never Say Never. Good way to build up the guys being involved. I liked it. Great segment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as we said, did its job, did what it was supposed to do, uh, get the viewer and the fan ready for the uh, the big show, and uh, just tie up all the storylines, make sure everybody knows what's going on, who's mad at who before the big show, and uh, that's exactly what uh, these last two episodes did, in fact, I think, and... Uh, and uh, yeah, all done up nicely. The uh, the booking done, uh, tied up with a nice red bow on top. Uh, no problems with uh, with logic or anything like that. I think Court Bauer and his team doing a great job of this. And uh, 
he had me looking forward to the to the pay per view. I keep calling it a pay per view, the yeah. big show anyway. Uh, yeah, it's ever habit. It's that, habit. yeah, yeah, I'm used to that. But uh, um, yeah, it it has the viewers and the fans looking forward to this stuff. The build up's been good. No questions, no ambiguities, no nothing. Just ready for some fights. Yeah, and man, it's awesome. We're at a great build. Uh, from there, we had a quick Von Erichs promo talking about the main event coming up tonight, basically laying it down about how much of a weasel Tom Lawler is and that they're ready to go out there and take on the team of violence forever. So we're going to get that coming right up. Uh, Selena then cut a promo. Again, she's laying it down that Mil Mortez is accepting. There will be this title fight for the uh, Openweight Championship. So the Openweight Championship is going to be defended in a couple – I believe it's the two weeks after Never Say Never is when we're going to actually get to see that matchup happen. It's going to be for the Openweight Championship. Mil Mortez taking on Alexander Hammerstone. Man, I'm looking forward to this one, Papa Smokes. That is going to be a great day. Yeah, yeah. I agreed with that, too. Uh, this feud has been uh, brought up nicely. I like the way they're both huge, muscular guys. This is going to be a clash of brawling of good wrestling and then the the sort of human element of uh jealousy and greed that's been brought in here by uh mil muertes and selena de la renta stealing the uh open weight championship belt from hammerstone there's there's heat there hammer doesn't like that like what a what a crappy thing to do in wrestling or can you imagine someone doing that in boxing is stealing the belt and saying well it's mine now because I took it. But that's a greasy, greasy, cowardly move, and uh, Hammerstone doesn't like it, and it's it's going to make for a great match, I think. Not at all. And yet, you know, at the same time, you kind of wonder, does Mads Kruger end up showing up at some point here? And, you know, I mean, he's been lurking. We haven't even settled the things with Hammerstone and Mads Kruger. So I think Hammerstone's got to watch his back. I mean, he's getting in deep with some really big, tough boys here, and – I mean, Mil yeah. Mortez one on one is going to be tough enough, but when you've got all of Con Contra that uh, are against you, you've got all of the team that Selena's putting together, and who knows what other surprises her or even Yosef Samael have been conjuring up in the meantime that they could throw at Hammerstone at any time. He's getting in deep, man, and I'm worried about his championship brain. Yeah, and you mentioned Mads Kruger. That seemed to be the main reason that Contra brought him in was just as a as a roadblock against Hammerstone between uh, Hammerstone and Fatu. So you know that uh, we mentioned we haven't seen uh, uh, Kruger in a few weeks now, but uh, that's his entire purpose in MLW, I think, is just to keep Hammerstone away from Fatu and I'm quite sure he's going to show up right when we least expect it and when Hammerstone least expects it. Maybe while he's uh, distracted trying to get his other belt back, uh, Mads Kruger will show up. We will see, but I'm pretty sure we haven't seen the last of Mads Kruger. Definitely not, man. He's on his way back, I'm sure of it. So <clears throat> from there, though, it's main event time, Papa Smokes. We've got this tag team match. It's the team of violence is forever against the Von Eric boys. And this one, the chain rope matchup. The ropes were all removed, replaced with chain link chains, I guess. Um, I don't know how much purpose I saw in the chain ropes in the end, especially knowing what I know about how a wrestling rope kind of goes together and what it feels like to bounce off one in the first place. I was kind of thinking to myself, I, I don't know that I would be so against bouncing off the chain rope as much as I would be off of the regular wrestling ropes, because those things, those wires underneath that electrical tape that holds a wrestling rope together, they fucking hurt. <laughs> they really do. Uh, the chain ropes, though, I mean, again, great selling by these guys when they were actually hitting them and stuff like that. And especially the Von Erics a few times when they're tossed into the chain ropes and they just kind of let their bodies fall in the natural way that they would fall running into chain yeah. ropes. They didn't try to dive around them or spin around them. They just went with it. They went with the flow and whatever happened, happened. I liked to see that. And again, these two teams, I think I would have enjoyed – just watching a tag match between these guys at a regular stipulation. I enjoyed it. It was decent. It was a good main event. Again, the chain ropes just didn't add anything extra for me is all. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things the commentators brought up early in this match was check out the corners. There's no turnbuckles. They can't put a turnbuckle there. If the chains are there, it's just the post and the chains. And I thought, Oh, 
shit, here we go. This is going to be good. Somebody's going to get busted open in the corner. But then the guys didn't really use the corners so much as a spot. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it, it struck me as a little bit silly, this step. I thought the ring looked cool with the chains on there. Like, it looked badass. But um, ultimately, uh, I think it was just a little bit of a uh, case of bells and whistles to kind of make this match look a little bit more exciting or something. I, I don't really think it needed it, to be honest. But uh, still, uh, we ended up with a good match out of it. Lawler, uh, despite his injury, coming to the ring with his sling and everything <laughs> and smiling and shit talking everybody. And you know, he's not actually injured, but. He does such a good job of being a weaselly heel that it's it's very amusing and everything. Um, and then, of course, his early interference led to violence is forever taking the advantage in this match for a long time for the for the first uh, half of the match for sure. And I'm starting to get more interested in uh, Garini and Ku's uh, tag team style and grappling style. I like the way they do that. I guess. In MLW, they call it fusion uh, wrestling, where it's a mix of MMA kind of thing. And uh, yeah, those guys know some good jujitsu holds and some good transitions. And uh, they still look like a little bit mildly uncomfortable with the pro wrestling mm -hmm. style, I think. But it, that's coming along. And I, I, I've even noticed just in the short time I've been watching Ku and Garini, they're, they're improving quickly in that. I like their style. I like to watch this match. And uh, even in a brawl like this, they had some good submission holds and some good mat grappling. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I, they are coming along quite nicely. I, I liked some of the work here. And some of the double team work, too. They're starting to get the idea of using that tag element of it and stuff like that, which was nice to see. And, yeah, man, the hold, especially Kevin Koo, like, man, that guy can put on some interesting submission uh, maneuvers yeah. that I'm really starting to enjoy. Uh, Gabrini, I mean, it makes me laugh. I started to have a bit of a chuckle on him thinking I'm like, Gabrini looks like what I do when I wear shorts and no t-shirts sometimes. So, I mean, I guess he could call him an every man in some sense, <laughs> that word, except for the only difference is he could kick the shit out of me with uh, one hand tied behind his back. And uh, I might be able to drink a beer or two better than him. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not a body guy in the least, but he's a knowledge guy. That's the thing. He's, he doesn't need the big muscles. He, he knows all the, uh, judo and jujitsu ju transitions and uh yeah i think uh garini has embraced his image nicely you notice he got the mullet going uh yeah. pretty early on there and, and he looks more comfortable with it all the time i i wasn't sure i was gonna like this guy when i first started watching but i'm getting into it now and he, he's he's a he's a plays the cowardly heel quite well i like it yeah, that'll be good to see. I, I, I love the development. I mean, it's going to be good development over time. I hope these guys stick with it and they stick with it in MLW in particular because I think great things will happen to them over there. So, but that uh, that rounded up our night with the Vaughn Eric's picking up the big victory over uh, Violence is Forever. A gr great solid match. Both teams coming out looking great and the Vaughn Eric's still looking strong, you know, looking to build towards eventually you know, eliminating this view, putting it behind them and going back after the tag titles, especially once that whole uh, dispute's uh, kind of finalized between the three teams fighting over that right now. I'm sure the Vaughn Eric boys are going to be right back in that title hunt here soon. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're clear baby faces too. Uh, the, uh, the most fun part of their t next tag team reign will be watching them chase it for a while. It'll be good. Yeah, looking forward to it. So anyway, that wraps up Ring Respect Radio. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Again, give us a subscribe, turn on notifications, check us out through Backbreaker, check us out on Podbean and every other channel you can check us out on now. And also on the Canadian Wrestling Network, I wanted to mention that, Backbreaker Media, that is uh, – done an agreement with the Canadian Wrestling Network. So right on their website, all on their social media, you can find myself and Pop Smokes and all episodes of Ring Respect Radio through the Canadian Wrestling Network. So wonderful there. Loving to see this build that we're doing here with the podcast. And great to finally test out technology or Pop Smokes. A couple older guys like us finally figuring it out. So it's been great to see you, man. Uh, we're going to end it right there. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. I'm just going to stop the recording here.